Hello world changers and welcome back to this week's IGTV episode with my wet soggy hair. I was going to wait until it had dried but this content is too important so we're just going to go with it. Need to get this message out into the world and we're just going to have wet hair to do it. It's going to be perfect. Don't stress. Stay with me. Messy hair. It's all just, it's all happening. Um, I wanted to talk about today what Marianne Williamson spoke about last night when I saw her live in LA. And this was a message that was just too important to wait and too important not to share straight away. Hi, Mama. Oh my gosh, Mama, I promise I'll return your call really soon. I just had to jump on and do this straight away. Um, so last night I saw Marianne Williamson live at the Saban. And... You, if you've been following my stuff for a while, you know that Return to Love was one of the most powerful books I've ever read. It was a book that shifted my entire perspective and changed my life, etc., etc. But seeing her speak last night just ignited this new, fresh fire in me to share her work with the world and to really um, to translate and to um, what's called to pass on her messages to you guys because I know how important they are and I know how transformational they were for me and I know how transformational they will be for you as well. So Marianne covered a lot last night. She covered everything from the intersection between politics and spirituality, the economy, the environment. She spoke, spoke about climate change. She spoke about Trump and the election and the importance of voter rights and the voter suppression that's happening in the US at the moment. She talked about the economy. She talked about the welfare state. She talked about the Oh, I've just got to drop this line in really quickly. Okay, so she talked about the difference between entitlements, handouts, and subsidies. So one of the people in the audience asked the question or begged the question, what, um, are we creating a state of dependency if we're, you know, fostering a welfare state, if we're giving people handouts, if we're giving low-income families food stamps, that sort of stuff. And she dropped this line that I will never, ever forget as long as I live. She said, when poor people get money, we call it handouts. When rich people get given money, we call it subsidies. So it's like the government is already spending billions and billions of dollars gifting it essentially to these corporations, to Big Pharma, to um, the Environmental Protection Agency, which doesn't protect shit. Um, but we turn a blind eye to that because it's seen as a subsidy, it's seen as injecting money into the economy, it's seen as directing funds where they need it most. And yet when we, God forbid, make an, a, an effort or make an, a means or make a movement towards giving, you know, the lowest income people in our country, in our world, in our society. So much of what she said last night can be applied to Australia as well as America and our financial system over here and there. As soon as we take that exact same principle, then people start to get up in arms about the fact that we're creating a welfare state, about the fact that we're creating a generational dependency. And she said one of the things that I love about the only generational dependency um, and the only people that are dependent on welfare are the, the kids of billionaires who are being <laughs> constantly going through this cycle of um, being born into these families and never having to work for it. Anyway, I won't get into that now. but. One of the things that she spoke about that really, really stuck with me last night is this idea that we need to show up. We as human beings, as light workers, as leaders, as just basically like part of the human race, we need to show up for our brothers and sisters. We need to show up for ourselves. We need to have a voice. We need to be vocal and we need to be engaged. The powers that be and the attacks that are happening on our democracy at the moment, and this is just as true in Australia as it is in the US, it, the, as, like it happens in the Western world that when one when it happens in one country, other countries follow suit. And Australia has always been the case in that we tend to be at the mercy of um, these sort of larger, I guess, Western liberal democracies such as America. So rest assured that if it's happening over there, we're not like we're not exempt from it. It's going to happen in our country as well. And she spoke about how there is a very sinister attack on the fundamental elements and principles of the democratic ideology happening in the states right now and a shift towards an undeniably authoritarian regime and we have in part allowed this to happen we have in part allowed our apathy our disengagement every time we say oh i just don't watch i don't just get in, i don't get involved in politics oh i just don't really like 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 listening to that stuff or really watching the news and you guys i'm so guilty of this so please come with me as I like unpack my own condemnation here. But every time we say, oh, I don't want to watch the news. I don't want to delve into that low vibrational stuff. I don't want to be involved in politics. I'm just not a political person. I just tend to stay out of it. We are complicit in 
the tearing apart, the dismantling of the fundamental rights that we have been given by God and the fundamental democratic ideology that we have spent the last however many hundred years constructing. And so what she spoke about last night and what really touched me is this idea that we need to be engaged. We need to be voting. We need to be paying attention. We need to be reading the articles. We need to be listening to the speakers. We need to be going to the events. We need to be educating ourselves as much as humanly possible on what is going on in the world, like the reality of what is going on in the world. And it's so easy, you guys, especially in the spiritual community, it's so easy for us to sort of fall into this trap of thinking that, you know, it's all an illusion. It's all perfect anyway. But as those of us with any kind of the sensitive souls among us will tell you that we've understood for a really long time now, we've understood a lot of us since we were born into this planet that things are not okay, that there's a lot going on in the world that is not perfect, there's a, not, a lot going on in the world that is not divine, that on the level of the reality in which we're existing, the level of the physical on which we exist, there is a lot that is really fucked up and there is a lot of, there is a lot of unnecessary suffering, right? There are 6 million people in the world right now that are subject to abject slavery, right? Not like, not sex slavery, which we know about, not um, other forms of like child labor, which we know about as well, like sweatshops, but abject slavery. The US, and this is something that she brought up last night that literally shocked me to my very core, the US has just ordered... 200 unibom excuse me unibombers that are capable of carrying something like 12 nuclear bombs each and we're talking like two of these is enough to end life on the planet as we know it and the US has just ordered 12 why the hell do we need 12 planes capable of carrying thermonuclear weapons in this day and age like it's so it's so easy to turn a blind eye to this stuff. I get it, you guys, because I've done it. And it's so easy to pretend that everything is beautiful and everything is amazing. And it's so easy to get caught up in this idea that I'm only one person. What can I do? But what we can do is stay engaged. She said this beautiful thing last night, Mary, and said every blog post you read, like every blog post that's, you know, keeping you awake is you're doing it for your country. Like that's your service to your country. That's your service to the world. Every blog post that you read, every YouTube video that you watch, every podcast that you listen to that's talking about this stuff that's, you know, keeping you engaged in the in the discussion about civil rights, in the discussion about marriage equality, in the discussion about environmental protection, in the discussion, whatever, every single, you know, a thing that you absorb or content that you engage in is you're doing it for your country. And I was speaking to an Uber driver last night on the way home and he, um, he literally, we got in the car and was somehow obviously divinely in, in like divinely timed, but we got on this conversation about climate change and he was expressing his concerns, um, very, very like reasonably, like reasonable concerns about low lying areas and countries like Haiti, countries like Fiji, um, countries that like Island or like water, waterlogged countries that in the next five to ten years have already started to become submerged because of the melting glaciers because of the increase in global temperatures because of the rising sea levels and he's like i i'm really concerned and i don't know what to do and he was talking about trump and he was talking about how he doesn't know if he's going to survive another two years under this like um under this leadership in their country and he doesn't know what's going to happen and this fear and this there's just a lot of fear coming up and he's like i really don't know what to do and this is i got this sense of like disempowerment and so rather than just me sitting there and then engaging in the oh yeah i know it's shit i know not that i would ever do that anymore anyway but coming out of this event especially my life was just like boom 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 we had this beautiful conversation this this discussion about okay well what could you do like if, you know, knowing that any change ever in the history of the human race has been preceded by a group of people getting fed the fuck up with what is currently going on and deciding to change things, deciding to make however small or however big a difference in the world, knowing that and knowing that, you know, the times we live in a time such as this, we were created for a time such as this, we've been gifted exactly what it, whatever it is that we need, the skills, the talents, the experiences, the, the gifts, whatever it is that we need to create change in this time that we've been living in, what would we do? And we had this beautiful discussion about we could campaign with our local member to support um, renewable energy. We can change our diet so that we're consuming less animal products, which we know the production of which contributes to the emission of greenhouse gases, which in turn contributes to um, global warming and the, the changes that we're seeing in our climate. 
we can, <laughs> this is a beautiful one that um, I actually said to him and came up with. I said, you have an incredible opportunity with what you do. You are literally speaking to hundreds of people every single day that get in your car. I was using an Uber pool at the time. There were two people sitting in the back seat. That's literally four people in a car in a conversation that have families, that have friends, that have circles of influence. You ha he has this unique opportunity, an opportunity that we all have to influence people, to spark something in people to get people to question the system the way it is and to get them to make changes and i set him a challenge i said every single person that comes in your car what if you could start up a conversation with them about you know something that they're concerned about in the world and then empower them with two or three actions that they could take like changing up their diet or switching to renewable energy or driving an electric car whatever it is and i could i could see his whole demeanor change and i could see his eyes light up and it was like he finally got it or he he got in that moment just how freaking powerful Powerful he was and that he wasn't just a slave to his circumstances we're not just at the mercy of this government that you know is currently making the decisions that affect this country and our country back home in Australia as well you guys like like I said we're all connected in this beautiful globalized society and world that we live in but if he took that opportunity that he was given every single day to connect with one person and then two people and then three people. That's how we change the world. That's how we create this beautiful ripple effect. And so what Marianne was saying and what sparked this conversation last night is that we don't have the luxury of being disengaged anymore. We don't have we don't have the time. We don't have we don't have like the literally the time on the planet left to be taking a back seat, to not be showing up and giving our gifts. And one of the examples that she used is that the world cannot wait for you to finish doing your trauma work before you show up and serve. And I know a lot of us in the spiritual community, a lot of us, like in just in my circle, and I know in myself alone, we we tend to we we get this idea in our heads that oh no, I have to be ready first. I have to be perfect first. I have to deal with my own shit first, and then I'll show up, and then I'll start my business, and then I'll write the blog, and then I'll do the activism work, and then I'll like it's just, and it keeps getting pushed further and further and further into the future, and. We really just don't have the luxury of, like, we don't have the luxury of doing that anymore. The world needs us as we are right now. And one of the most beautiful things that I've ever heard that she said is that I will not be perfect and you will not be perfect, but we will all show up and that will be good enough. You guys, like my little bit, it's like the healthy functioning of the human body, right? We're all cells. We're all contributing to the healthy function of functioning of the body. What I do and the way that I'm called to serve will be different to the way that you are called to serve. What she is called to do in the world will be different to what the, the person next to you or your brother or sister or father or mother or uncle or whatever is called to do in the world in order to contribute to the healthy, healthy functioning of the body. But it's up to uh, like we know that we won't always get it right we know that we will stuff up we know that we will fail forward again and again and again and again but what we have what we have that the forces that seek to suppress us the forces that seek to divide us don't is the grace of god and when i show up with the grace of god on my life and you show up with the grace of god on your life and he shows up with the grace of god on his life and they show up with the grace of god on their life what we have is enough so when i show up I will not be perfect. You will show up and you will not be perfect, but we will still show up and it will be enough because by the grace of God, the powers that we have, the gifts that we've been given will be magnified. The connection and the pure intentions that we have will be solidified. And from that just stems the most beautiful, unrivaled, unmeasurable power who's that the magnitude of which that we have we've never we haven't even seen yet. We haven't even seen a freaking glimpse of it yet. And that is the power that has, you know, that's the power that has the force behind it and the love within it to overturn authoritarian regimes, to feed the hungry, to create some more equal, the more equal distribution of resources in this country and the Western and the world as a whole. And that is what is going to save the world. But it takes each of us tuning into, and this is something she spoke about as well, each of us is like a lamp and in order for us to shine, we need to first be plugged in and turned on, right? So if you, I want you to think of you guys, I think I want you, to, you guys to think of yourselves as a lamp as you move throughout the world in the next couple of hours and days and weeks and months and years. You need to be plugged in. So what does that mean? We need to be plugged into a community. We need to be plugged into information. We need to be plugged into people who get it, people who are on the same journey as us. We need to be plugged into the knowledge and resources and whatever. We also need to be turned on. We also need to have our lights shining brightly. And that means 
filling ourselves up with self-care. That means um, doing the things that we know will make us come alive. That means giving our gifts in the world in a way that serves people using the unique gifts and talents and experiences that we've been given. But each of us in order to figure out, and I know so many of us have the question, well, what is it that I'm here to do? Like so many of you have the question, what is it that I'm actually here to give? What's the part that I have to play in this? And that is where it is your responsibility to tune in to that which is within you the source of all light, wisdom, guidance, love, unconditional power, whatever it is that lives within you, and ask. That's all you ever need to do is ask. Meditate every single freaking day. And that was something that hit me so hard last night when she spoke about the importance of a daily meditation practice in connecting in with who we really are and then asking God to show us where he wants us to go. You guys know I've said it a million times, the prayer from A Course in Miracles. Where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? Every single freaking morning we need to be getting in meditation and asking that question. It could be something as small as, oh, go check on your neighbor who hasn't, who you haven't seen in a couple of weeks. Go message that woman who's going through a divorce. Go take care of those children whose parents are really struggling at the moment. Go give $50 to that homeless person on the street. Whatever it is, these tiny little acts are adding and shifting and adding and adding up to shifting the collective consciousness of our planet and the more that we tune into that beautiful guidance the more connected we are to whatever it is that god the universe your higher self source is asking you to do next not only will you be more fulfilled because we are never as human beings we are designed to be in relationship with our creator we are designed to be in service to the creation or to the creator and we are designed to be used in the service of the highest good so not only will you be more fulfilled than you have ever been in your entire life because i i can't speak for anyone else but for me the source of all my joy fulfillment peace the most fulfilling thing that i've ever found the, the only thing that will ever fulfill me to this level in this point is being used in the service of the highest good being used by god to create change in the world not only will you be more fulfilled but you start to create ripple effects that spread out that turn another person's lamp on that get another person plugged in that whatever that that help another person to you know become educated and it's like on a practical level you guys it looks like being engaged in the political system it looks like getting people if you're in the states at the moment i know there's like elections coming up it means getting people to the polls and getting people to vote it doesn't matter which like it does matter which way but getting people educated on what's really going on like getting rid of like letting go of all these bullshit lies that politics is complicated that politics is hard that politics is something that other people do because it's that ideology that got us here you guys the idea or the thought that politics is something that happens in the highbrow or the elite section the elite sectors of society between members of a highbrow higher class has led to this culture of political disengagement where the most important decisions that affect all of our lives are being made by white middle class men behind oak panelled walls and the more that we continue to perpetuate this idea that politics is for other people that other people get to make those decisions and it's just something that i don't really engage in the more that we're allowing that to happen the more that we're allowing the removal of children from their parents in the fucking 21st century the more that we're allowing um our environment to become increasingly destroyed by single-use plastics the more that we're allowing um the yeah the forced removal of children from their parents like it's there's so many yeah there's so many issues you guys and like i said you will be directed to where it is that you are most meant to serve and our job is not to get overwhelmed because the powers in place at the moment that's what they're counting on they're counting on us to become overwhelmed they're counting on us to become tired and exhausted and burnt out by the magnitude of all these freaking problems but the thing about this power structure that's currently in place you guys is that it's like a house of cards it's a freaking really powerful illusion and when you pull one out they all come tumbling down they really do and that was what i was going to circle back around to really quickly is this idea that marianne spoke about really beautifully last night that i just had to share this idea that the way that she tied it into what's going on in the world and the reality that we're facing on a daily basis 
and the link that she made between that and then those of us who have mental illness and mental health issues. So those of us that struggle with depression, anxiety, bipolar, I've been really open. You guys, if you're seeing this channel for the first time, you know that um, if you haven't seen my stuff before, I've been really open in the past about my, obviously my experiences with depression and anxiety and bipolar disorder. And it's, you know, something that is fundamental and threaded throughout my entire journey. But the way that she spoke about it last night, and she speaks about it a lot in her book, Tears to Triumph, which I just freaking love and adore, and I'm going to go back and read again after hearing her speak about it last night. But it's this idea that those of us with mental health issues are not broken. We don't need to be changed. We don't need to be fixed. We are highly sensitive beings. We are acutely aware of the pain and suffering that exists in the world right now. And it doesn't fucking matter that it's not happening in our backyards. It doesn't matter that it's not happening in our homes, even though much of it is. It doesn't matter that where we are is beautiful and blissful and we can go sip on our almond milk latte and our country is peaceful and everything's clean and beautiful and, you know, there's no problems in the world. It does not matter because we are still tuned in. We are highly attuned to the collective pain of the world. We can sense the psychic pain that millions of people around the world are feeling right now, are struggling right now, and are suffering through right now. And that is the cause of our pain. Our depression, our anxiety, the chemical imbalance, the wires cross, whatever you wanna call it, is a symptom of the psychic pain that we can feel in the depths of our soul, the suffering that we can feel from a woman in Iran who can't feed her children, from the, ref the millions of refugees that are sitting on the borders in these horrific camps, waiting to get into countries, unable to go back to where they came from and then unable to enter into a new space and a happy life. It doesn't matter that we don't see it on TV every day. It doesn't matter that it's not happening to us. We can feel it. And so when we predicate or when we perpetuate a culture and an idea that says that those of us with mental illness need to be fixed we just need to take a pill and we'll be okay we need to go into therapy and we need to do this and this and this and I'm not I don't want to devalue and I don't want to de I don't want to take away or discredit the good work that medication can do in under the right circumstances and the amazing work that therapists have done both for me and those closest to me but the more that we perpetuate this idea that there is something wrong with us, the more that we are saying that it's okay or that we're turning a blind eye to the suffering of the world. Because when we tell someone that can see so clearly that things are fucked up, can see so clearly, even if they're not consciously aware of what's happening, can see so clearly that things need to change, we're saying we're not only discrediting their suffering, we're discrediting the suffering that of the millions of other people all around the world that is contributing on a psychic metaphysical level to the pain that we feel over here in the West. And it's kind of like she uses the example of a broken leg, right? When you break your leg, you don't go and take a painkiller. You don't go and try and numb the pain. You don't go and get someone to try and talk you out of your pain. You understand that the pain is coming from a very real and very present threat, the fact that you have a broken leg. And rather than taking a painkiller to numb the pain, you know that you need to reset the bone. Those of us with mental illness know that our leg, like our leg is broken, our world is broken. There is so much going on in the world that we can't fix or control or change right now. And rather than telling us to go back to sleep, rather than telling us to just think happy thoughts, rather than telling us to just focus on the bright side and focus on the positive, we need to actually reset our thinking. We need to reset the bone. We need to look at what's causing the psychic pain that is, has so many of us reaching for antidepressants and pills and whatever it is. And that's what we need to, and those are the things that we need to address first and foremost, right? So if you're going through mental health issues in the moment, depression, anxiety, OCD, whatever it is, I had a download about OCD the other night that I'm going to talk about. Message me if you want to know more about it and I'll get on a call with you. I'll do whatever. I don't care. Um, but that was the biggest thing that came across for me is that if that's what you're going through right now, there is nothing wrong with you. You were just highly attuned and highly sensitive to the state of the world, which for the most part, there is a lot, you know, there's a lot going on right now that's not okay. And there is a lot going on right now that there are a lot of people who are in pain right now. And rather than letting that overwhelm us, rather than letting that take us over, rather than letting that disempower us, we need to find it within us, that fire, that fight, that burning passion and desire, and we need to use it 
to make a change and to make a difference and to become engaged. And you guys know, I can't tell you what that looks like for you because what it looks like for you is so different to what it looks like for me. What I'm being called to do in the world is different from what you're being called to do in the world. But what I know for sure is that each of us has an equally important and vital role to play in the healing of the planet that we are destined to enact simply by being ourselves. So get in meditation, get quiet, get silent, get tuned in, get tapped in, get turned on, turn your freaking light on, get plugged in and get turned on. You are the lamp, you are the lighthouse that the world needs right now. And then go and live that out in whatever way that looks like to you. If it looks like getting people to the polls, if it looks like campaigning against single-use plastics, getting people to use reusable bags and straws, it's been coming up a lot for me lately. If it looks like campaigning against like the unequal distribution of wealth, whatever it looks like for you, you guys, go and get engaged. And we don't have a moment to waste. We don't have a moment longer. We don't have any more time to sit and I need to figure out my stuff and I need to heal my trauma wounds. I've been doing a lot of trauma work this year, you guys, but I now know that I can't let that stop me. I can't let the fact that I have things that are still going on in my head stop me from doing what I'm here to do and showing up as who I really am in the world because we just, you know, we don't have that luxury anymore. It's like history will look back at this time and as with every generation, like we have the obligate or we have the moral responsibility to leave the planet in a better state than when we found it. And I know for a fact that generations to come will look back on our time as we have with generations gone before us. Like I said, this happens in every generation and they'll want to know what we did. They'll want to know how we showed up. And I know that when my kids ask me about, okay, mom, like, you know, this happened in history and all these things were happening and we're learning about this thing in school at the moment and where were you? Like, what, what were you doing? What was going on? I want to be able to tell them that I showed up. I want to be able to tell them that I did everything that I freaking could. I want to be able to tell them that I was the best person that I possibly could be for this planet and that I did everything that I possibly could for the future that they deserve. So... Yeah, I hope you guys will join me in that. And um, if you want any more details about the event last night, let me know. Um, I might write a blog post about it later. We'll see. But yeah, turn your light on. We fucking need you right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I love you guys. Have the best day ever. Bye.